There are shields over here, uh, the Skjaldr, uh, that uh, author Von Eschen is working on, and he's doing them historically accurate. These are to a T. We plan on testing these out, uh, and we're going to give it uh, a good testing and see how they work. These are the very, he's got the very thin one uh, that's uh, anywhere from a quarter to a sixteenth of an inch at the edge. We believe they might have been used to trap weapons. Hey, what are you doing today? So what I've got going here is a piece of animal hide. Here's the outside of the animal and here's the inside. Uh, and what I am doing is I am scraping the residual uh, fibrous material off the inside of the hide. Uh, I think that this is going to make it uh, easier to, to bind to the to glue to the shield. Uh, and also the scraping itself makes the material more pliable. Um, so this area is considerably more rigid than in here where I've scraped. Um, so I'm using a, a hand stone. Uh, since the, uh, the Viking uh, orbital sander was disqualified from uh, uh, being an actual period find. Um, and uh, just, just scrape it with the, uh, the nice uh, uh, hard stone uh, until it uh, is the consistency that uh, is desired. So once the, uh, this is pretty good in here, a little work here, this is pretty good, and then a lot of work up here. So I'm getting there. All right. All right, can't wait to test those shields out. Yep. Hey, Lothar, what are you doing today? Uh, working on getting some shields put together. Uh, so right now, just taking some of the hide edge strips and we'll be applying that around the edge of the shield. Uh, right now, it's been, you know, the plank's been put together, it's been faced on both sides. The, the center cut here, the, the center circle that's been sawn out is smaller than what it will ultimately be. And the main reason that we do it this way is we are hand hammering a boss. And when you hand hammer a boss, it's hard to predict what the final circumference, what the final size will correct, be of that correct. boss. And so we make it a little bit small, we get the boss made, and then once we figure out what the boss is going to look like, then we'll finish it up. And normally you could say, well, why don't you just wait, finish the boss, and then go cut it up? Absolutely, you could do that. But we have, I think, uh, anywhere from four to seven people working on building a couple of shields here right now. So we're trying to multitask. Right, but, get them uh, done quickly so uh, yeah, yeah. Iron Rolling can quickly destroy them with Absolutely. sharp swords. <laughs> I think it's going to perform better than, than, than you would expect, even though this edge, I don't know if anyone can see this out here, is going to be about a sixteenth of an inch. Yeah, so here you can see tapered kind of that. from a quarter in the center. But it is, it will be really, I'm excited to see what this is going to be like. Because I think you're right, this is, despite its, how thin it is, it is solid. Very it's solid, very, dense, very solid. Yeah. It's very dense. That's what I would call it is dense or, or solid or, uh, uh, I don't know exactly what term the Vikings would use, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, it's it, 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 ropey might be the term. He was saying these <laughs> words. Because I think it's going to give as well, very much like a, uh, Modern uh, plastic shield or something—it feels like it will actually spring. You yeah, know, it's a spring I am. Us. I'm excited to see how that works. It, it will definitely warp and spring back into shape. So, and it seems very cut resistant as well with the rawhide. So, anyway, let's get let's get going and uh, see what happens. Sounds good. Thank you, Thran. The internet looking for replica Viking shields. The vast majority will be made in this fashion. Uh, I believe this is about half inch thick plywood. Uh, and I'm not sure the gauge, but this is pretty thick rawhide on the edge. Mm -hmm. So this I want to see sort of interact with a modern blade. Uh, and what I mean by modern blade is your typical HEMA uh, compliant blade for blunt steel fencing. So, mm -hmm. you know, two millimeter edge, pretty thick. Like what people do uh, using the reenactment combat, for instance. Right. Yeah. So I want to see how that interacts with this shield. And then I want to compare that to a more accurate replica for the swords versus these two different authentically made shields. The one here on the left, uh, this one starts at a little over a quarter inch thick in the middle. Uh, it is chamfered at a, a relatively consistent taper down to the edge. And the edge is just under a quarter inch thick. Mm -hmm. uh, this one here has no edging, but it does have a hide facing on one side and it is bare on the back. It's just paint on the back. So that's this particular one. In case anyone really cares, this is uh, milk paint on the front of this shield. So it's basically the casing glue paint then. 
Right, so this one here is based on yet another find. Now this one comes down to a much smaller edge. Uh, this one here is uh, about a quarter of an inch thick in the middle. Uh, and it stays relatively consistent in its, uh, in its thickness until about here. And from here it starts to taper to the very edge, which is about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Oh, that's the, the one that is so super thin at the edge, right? Right. And the other thing to, to remember about this sixteenth of an inch thick is there are multiple layers in this small space. There's the wood core. There's a hide facing, uh, there's one on the front, there's one on the back, and then there's a rawhide edge. So all of those things combined make up the edge that you see here. Yeah, gotcha. And just to show you just a little bit before people start to hack into this, one thing that's interesting is when you're affixing all of these pieces together using hide glue, this shield here, even though it's smaller, it weighs a little bit more than this shield here. Mm -hmm. It also, even though it is incredibly thin, it is a very robust, very sturdy shield. So it will be interesting to see when you guys run your tests exactly how this interacts mm -hmm. with the Viking Age sword. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hope you guys have fun. We shall. <laughs> Hi everybody, we're here uh, to run the final test at the Oswald Viking Martial Arts School in Egan, Minnesota. It's a grand opening, it's the evening of the last day of the grand opening. And uh, this is uh, my good friend, Friend. And I'm Roland Lotzecha from Dimicato. And um, uh, we have been looking today at a particular technique that uh, builds up to a situation where uh, an ed the edge of a sword would meet the edge of a shield more or less at right angles to the handle. Now if this was an authentic shield that would mean that the sword would bite or hit the edge um, of that shield running with a cut running along the fibers of uh, the planks. This is not an authentic shield. This is a shield that is, uh, consists of a solid board, it's pretty beefy, uh, it does not taper in cross section, so there's no distal taper towards the edge, it's one, it's one uh, consistent thickness, there is a rawhide edging at the end, it's a very substantial one, so that's pretty hard, um, and it weighs a ton. Right? So that's the kind of stuff that uh, you can purchase if you uh, look for shields on the internet. This is the kind of stuff that you can pick up. It's also very similar to a lot of uh, reenactment shields that I have seen over the years. So um, this shield, um, you could consider a standard reenactment shield, Viking reenactment shield. The swords that we're using, they're really nice training swords actually. They behave very much like original swords. The weight of this one is only 800 grams, but uh, due to its balance, um, there's a lot of blade presence because it balances quite a stretch away from the cross bar, and that means its handling characteristics, they are pretty much like the one original sword that Craig Johnson of Arms and Armor and the Oakshot Institute supplied for this weekend for people to get an impression of original swords. Now, so you could say the equipment that we're using, trying to uh, run this test or run this uh, first level of this test uh, is pretty much the kind of equipment that people are using in reenactment, right? Um, I don't really know about uh, uh, SEA, they wouldn't use no, they uh, sword yeah, yeah, they would use these swords, but they have substantial shields. They do have some people who do steel, but it's not the. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so um, we are here to test whether um, if one uses authentic equipment. The edge of the Viking shield is um, able to intercept a sharp edge of a sword in such a fashion that the edge bites into the shield and you could thus use this as a tactical advantage in combat using that moment that the, uh, that the blade is engaged and uh, caught in the shield to either disarm your opponent or using that split second to your tactical advantage. Now, uh, we're first going to show you 
the technique that we have come up with. So our idea of shield fighting is that uh, we think it's all about binding with the shields in order to create an opening. So right here I'm trying to get to the outside and if I manage to get the outside I would create an opening and cut with the sword. Uh, the edge is always stronger than the flag. So right now I was attacking the outside of his shield, but it could also occur that um, one fighter is able with his edge to attack the inside of the shield, which, uh, which again is a flag. Right? The edge is stronger than the flag. So in this particular technique, it will build up to a situation, if we just change uh, sides here, it will build up to a situation where Rand manages to attack the inside. So right now he's on the inside and you can't see but he has built up this huge gap, triangular gap, right here between our shield edges, which now we can exploit by striking a backhand strike at my arm. So once again the same action from the other side. Just come from there. So we're entering in order to gain an advantage on the shield fight. He slid on the inside, so here's his opening, and there comes his cut. And it's supposed to hit my arm. So this is this is how you, this is your idea, right? So this is his idea. Now, uh, as I see this opening, I know, and I see he lowers his blade in order to strike at my arm, which would be the end of the fight. I can drop the edge of this shield downwards in order to intercept your. So, right? Okay, so with this kind of equipment, there is of course no bite into the shield. I can still make an effort to win the inside myself, so by putting the edge onto his flat and uh, also on the man, I get a good target here and strike at him. I can actually hit him with the boss. That's pretty cool. However, you see that. Uh, even though he cannot do much down there with the sword, I'm not in control of the sword here. Okay, so let's try it again in the flow. Okay, so you uh, you actually make an effort to uh, hit the target. You just give a short delay, so I have time for demonstrational purposes to lower the uh, edge of my shield. Which would give me the chance 
to turn my edge in, right? You can already see it. I can feel it with my nail. Um, this is the little cut that was produced by, see here, at the very edge. So this, this is the little cut that was produced. Um, it didn't do anything. Right? Let's give it another try. Right? I'm going to turn the shield to make sure that uh, we have a virgin, virgin edge for you to strike it. Okay, so this one is a lot more substantial, really. Mm. But it did not bite. No, no, no. no. But it's deeper. And, and you bounced off, didn't you? Like it kind of bounced out. You, 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 you Yeah, exactly. Which so you, so you, So you uh, weren't embedded in that shield at all. It looks like it's a good quarter inch in, no, on that side. It's mostly just raw. Well, if you just put the edge in. Okay. Maybe an eighth of an inch in the back and a little bit deeper in the front for this hit there first. Yeah, that's where the edge is uh, because it has a, like a rectangular edge. It doesn't taper to the edge. Good. Okay, so um, here you would say that uh, in terms of uh, technique, the shark didn't really change anything, did it? No. Now, um, if we look at uh, authenticity, it was only his sword that was actually authentic and matching uh, period arms. That shield wasn't, because as I said, it's a one solid, uh, one solid board and there are no planks at all. And overall, there's absolutely no distal taper, which is not authentic at all. So we're now going to look at an authentically built shield next and see what happens there. Okay, you can come back. Okay, so uh, as you can see, I have now taken this shield. This one is authentically made. Um, it is made from split planks. Um, there is a, uh, there's a height cover, a fairly uh, thin height cover on, uh, on the front. So that facing here, you can see because that has been used and uh, it has been exposed to some moisture. That's where uh, it is come peeling off a little bit. Um, that's where you can see how thin this material is. There's absolutely no edging here on this shield, so um, that means the uh, actual boards are exposed. And now looking at this edge, um, if I hold it this way, let me just turn it around. It's only painted on the back side, right? There's no facing on the back side. Um, as you can see at right angles to the handle, that's where you can see um, the fibers of the wood. So the grain runs at right angles to the handle and naturally it does because um, the stick of the handle connects all those uh, different planks and so logically the grain would be at right angles to the handle. That also means that as a warrior using that device I exactly know if I uh, present the, the grain or if I pre present uh, the side of the board um, and of course uh, everybody has <clears throat> cross grain, I believe, yeah. Yes, yeah, so exactly. And of course, everybody knows um, who has been splitting uh, logs that you want to cut into the grain, right? So, uh, so uh, Arthur's theory is that uh, because there is 
evidence of, uh, or actually lack of evidence for, uh, with many shields there's lack of evidence for actual edges, that many of these shields had a facing which uh, also connects all these planks neatly and uh, adds a lot to the structural integrity of the shield. Um, there might have been a reason why they uh, left the edge bare so often. And this is what we're going to test now by uh, going through exactly the same technique again and see what it does. Right? Yeah. And by the way, this feels so much more comfortable because uh, this one has a really nice weight. Now it feels like it matches this lively blade. Like uh, this thing, yeah, you can move it around easily. So it's a device that, uh, that you can play around without tearing the muscles in your shoulder. <laughs> like with uh, uh, a tabletop like this one. <laughs> okay, so let's see what we can do. Okay, first one we're going to Relax, yeah, okay, and um, we keep the same case as we did before, so it's the same technique. And it's stuck here. just helping out. Yeah, actually, uh, I did a different turn this way, this time. I was turning it this way. Which yeah. did. Did it? Uh, yeah, I couldn't do anything for a second. It oh, okay. Like totally because, you because, yeah. you, because you... It was clicked in. Yeah, yeah. You, you clung to your sword and it was taken this way. But it wasn't uh, uh, turned out of your grip because I was turning this way. Uh, before, with the other technique, I was turning in this direction. I was right. turning outwards. Right. It Somehow it felt good it did. to bring the sharp you sword over the there. Shark, but um, we're, going, we're also going to uh, see what happens uh, if I uh, try out exactly the same technique. Okay? Yeah. Which is uh, intercepting and then turning it this way. Huh. Well, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? That was in there. Uh, yeah, it was uh, definitely in there. Yeah. So that means with my shield edge, I was uh, controlling his sword with a uh, what in martial arts you call a snake motion. That's the kind of motion you do when you do disarms. Yeah? Because if, uh, uh, if you hold out that sword here, and this is a sharp oh, 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 Like as if you have struck to the center. Oh, sorry, sorry. So if you have intercepted a sword, you can safely grab a sharp, twist it from his grip, and strike at it. Right? So it's no problem grabbing sharp swords only as they move. So if I start pulling here and let go, this is when I get cut. Right? Oh, this is right. <laughs> <laughs> See how many people we Good can make bleed today. Good thing I check yeah. afterwards. <laughs> but there's really nothing with the, uh, on my hand. So it's uh, really, uh, it is definitely possible to do that. And I've uh, done that in uh, sharp fencing too. And so if uh, there are people who don't believe it, uh, they're actually uh, videos on, yeah, there are videos on, on, on YouTube where well, well, you can see me doing that in free play. Anyway, so uh, let's give it another try. So I'm going to turn the shield around. shows that uh, for me as the one um, using that particular technique I can do uh, the same snake motion that you see in Talhofer and uh, that is probably also in 133 I can do it with a shield because that this kind of disarm that I just uh, showed to you uh, with just the blades is actually pretty much the same motion that having dropped the shield it's the same motion only now I'm using the shield instead of uh, the hand. Yeah. I love it. It's <laughs> awesome, right? Yeah, okay. Let's swap shields. Yep. Okay, so here we have a, another authentic shield. And that one's quite a bit heavier than this one. It is, yes. It's thinner. Yeah. Okay, so this is really interesting. The shield, uh, uh, you would expect it to be lighter, but um, the distal taper of that one uh, is. Uh, 
not as gradual as on that one. It's only, and this is the really interesting thing about it, uh, uh, in, why, uh, in which respect it differs most from the other one, its edge is extremely thin, right? You can see that here, super thin. Um, Arthur based the reconstruction, this repl replica shield, on finds of uh, iron shield clamps, which survived while the organic material disintegrated uh, over the course of centuries. But the, the clamp gives us an indication of the thickness of the edge. And um, so this is the reconstruction he came up with. He decided to uh, put, a, put a height facing on either side of this shield. So the height plus the wood and boards comes to a sixteenth of an inch, is that correct? Yes. So that's uh, one, about 1.6 millimeter. That's super, super thin. Um, it's this kind of reconstruction, it's this kind of evidence that made Arthur think of using shields actively to catch blades and um, it may well be the purpose uh, and uh, actually a technique that was used because it's not a rare thing. You see, um, you see a taper towards the edge with many shields. You see it with the Illerup shields in the, I think it's third century. Uh, you see it with the Trelleborg shield. Uh, they are not going to, to such an extreme thinness at the very edge, but um, this is definitely not an outlier if you look at uh, existing evidence. All right, let's see if they actually thin down edges for a particular purpose, like catching blades. Okay, same technique. Okay, so this one bounced off, but... Um, I think the height was pretty tough. No, I can tell you why that was. As I sunk my shield, I actually did not use the information that the handle gives me, namely that if I want to catch the blade, I should uh, preferably turn uh, the grain against the, uh, against the sword. Uh, yeah, so it hit, right there. it hit here. Now what I find su surprising is that, um, watch out for the point, uh, what is really surprising is that it was so substantial. I mean, I expected, uh, my plan was to catch it with the edge, but uh, this super, super thin edge, which uh, would be destroyed easily with um, reenactment blades that have a two or maybe three millimeter edge, that would simply just crush the edge. It just absorbed a sharp sword easily. Um, and the, so, so the sharp sword, the sharp sword inflicts less damage on an authentic edge than a blunt wood. Yeah? We have a... Uh, Arthur has told me that uh, clubbing uh, his shields with blunts just kills them pretty quickly. Now it's really interesting insight that uh, this is not the case with uh, authentic weapons, namely a sharp sword in this case. Okay, let me see if I can, if I can drop the shield uh, closer to my body so that I make use of the grain. I was pushing it out a bit and thus he hit it here. Okay. In a loud professional okay, so like I just love when the hypothesis works out. <laughs> so you can see this is a major cut. It, uh, the, the blade was firmly embedded. And because of the snake move, the twist of uh, my arm. It was bound. Turning the shield, yeah. It, it uh, 
held the sword nicely while I turned it. I could feel how uh, I could feel where his blade was, which is exactly what you do in historical swordsmanship. You want to feel where the thread uh, the the thread is. This is what uh, uh, what they call fühlen in the late medieval um, manuscripts. You want to feel where the pressure of the opponent goes. Uh, this is what we do with the shields. But here I could actually do it uh, not. Uh, um, with, uh, with your sword. So earlier on I was uh, using sensing through the weapons with the shields and then at that point I knew I had you. Yeah? Right. Which, also means, which also means, interestingly, uh, I will feel if um, the sword didn't bite. I don't have to look. Okay, so that means if I'm a um, seasoned and skilled warrior, uh, then I might resort to a different technique or I may decide to go to the other side in order to uh, control his blade, but um, yeah, that was really impressive. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks a lot to Arthur for providing the chance to uh, do this very, very special test. It's a very nice period. Shoes. Oh yeah, and they just—they just, nice they just That's nice handle so nicely. Um, yeah, I think this is uh, very, very educating, and very telling. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you it's very a pleasure much for coming.